in this video, I will show you how to create 10,000 unique NFTs. Now, you might have seen the headlines in the news where kids are selling NFTs and becoming millionaires overnight. Now, if this has given you the FOMO and you are just like me, you're not an NFT millionaire, well, then this video is for you because in this video, we are going to create our own NFT collection. I have divided the video into four different steps. In step one, we are going to create the layers that we're going to use for our NFT. In step two, we're going to look at the requirements. And in step three, we're going to generate our thousands of NFTs. And finally, in step four, which is not covered in this video, but I have left the links to the videos down below. In step four, you should upload your NFTs to a marketplace and make some money out of them. I have also a video on how to create your own custom minting website. So check that out down in the links below. If you get stuck at any point in this process, we have an amazing Discord community where I would love to see your final result, your NFT that you have created. And also you can paste the screenshots of your process in any part that you might get stuck. And I would gladly help you or somebody from the community would. Now, with all of that said, let's start with step number one. In step one, we are going to create our art collection. Our art collection is going to be made out of different layers that we are going to create right now. Our layers, we can create them with different tools. We can use GIMP, we can use Photoshop, we can use different tools that are for graphics. Or we can use online tools like Vista Create or Canva that allow us to create online everything that we require without downloading any tools. For simplicity and also because I'm not a graphic designer, I will be using Canva because it makes it really easy to create an NFT art collection. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a new design. We're going to select a custom size and we're going to select 1000 by 1000. This is going to be the size of the art for our NFT. Just like with any NFT, we need a mascot. We need something that is going to be the centerpiece of our image onto which we are going to look, put different layers. Now, we can search for a mascot and I have already done this process, but I will show you the first two layers, how to do them together. So for example, let's search for a dog. We are going to be doing a dog NFT. So let's search for a dog and see what kind of dogs we have. We're going to take this and we're going to use this as the base image for our NFT. Once we have added our mascot, the next thing to do is to add different layers. So for example, we would search for glasses and we could add some glasses to our puppy. After that, we could search for a hat. We can also add more layers or as many layers as we want. So I'm also going to add a cigarette to the puppy. Now this is horrible. So I have, uh, this is even worse than my usual bad art. So now after we have added a couple of layers to our base image, the next thing to do is to remove the different elements, such as, for example, this cigarette and paste them into an empty layer. And then we'll create a new page. We're going to take this hat and paste it into another layer. And we're going to do the same thing also with all of the different components that we've added to our base image. So like this, we have all of the different elements that we require. I have completed this. Let me show you what the completed work looks like. I have used this base image and I have added different elements. As you can see, every element has its own page where it's by itself and separated from all of the other elements. I have added uh, the base image also in different colors to give it more variety as well. And also I have included backgrounds as well to add it more variety. So here you can see the different backgrounds. One thing to keep in mind, and that will make your life a lot easier, is that you already rename all of your images in this syntax right here, because this is going to be required later to generate thousands of randomly generated images from these different layers. So you have the name of the image that has to be unique, a space, hash, and a number. The number is from zero to 100 and it represents the rarity of that item. So for example, this has a rarity of 10. So 10% 10 of the images are going to be generated with this hat. Once you have all of your images and all of your different 
layers, you are ready for the next steps. So the first thing that you have to do is download all of your files as a PNG and as a transparent background. So let's download all of our files. Now, while our files are downloading, let's go with step number two. For step number two, we have to install a couple of things that are going to be required to generate the randomly generated images. The first thing that we need is Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is a tool that is going to allow us to read in a syntax format and in a good format the code that we are going to use to uh, generate all of the images. So it's nothing more than a editor, a code editor. Once you have downloaded and installed Visual Studio, make sure that it's installed by going to your Windows icon and searching and opening it. The next thing that we need is Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript server that is going to allow us to run the JavaScript code that is going to generate the images. Now, remember, we're not going to write any code. We're just going to copy and paste and change a couple of lines for the, to execute the code how we want. It is extremely simple and anybody can follow along. Now, install. Uh, you can install the stable and most recommended version of uh, of JavaScript, of Node.js, Node but remember that you install the default configuration. Don't change any default parameters. You should also make sure that the path is installed correctly. Once you have installed Node.js, open a command line terminal or CMD inside of your Windows and type in. This should tell you the version of Node that you currently have on your system. If you get this, that means that it has been successfully installed and you can proceed with the next step. However, before we go to the next step, we need one last thing. I want to show you all of the code that we are going to be using. The code is publicly available and it's called the Hashlip Art Generator. The Hashlip Art Generator is a JavaScript library that, allow, that has different components and one of these components will allow us to generate thousands of images however we want. Let's start immediately with step number three. The first thing that I have to do is I have to open Visual Studio and I will open a new folder. I will create a new folder and I will call this folder random art. Inside of this folder, I will select this folder and I will have a new clean instance of Visual Studio. The first thing that I should do is search for a new terminal. With the new terminal enabled, I can just run the following command. The following command is going to copy all of the files for our hash lips right inside of our random art folder. So right here we have everything. And now the last command that we need is we need to enter inside of this uh, folder. So CD, once we are inside of the folder, all we have to do is type in npm install. This command is going to install all of the different dependencies and all of the different requirements that we need to run this script and this code. Once it has been installed, you will see that there is some node modules that have been created. Now that we have installed all of the different dependencies that we need, now we can run our code and generate some images. Now we haven't still uploaded any of the images that we have downloaded inside of these folders, but let's just test our script and see if it's going to work and see what happens. So all I have to do is type node index.js. And as we can see, there is something that is going on. Created one, two, three, four, five. And I have a new folder that has been created called build, where I have all of the different images that have been randomly generated. So now what we have to do is make sure that we generate our own images with our layers and we don't use these layers from this collection. We need to go into this layers folder and we can see that there is different layers. So we have a background and the different layers, the eye color. So we have to replace all of the, these files with our own files. Now I'm going to do that and be right back. All right, I have updated all of my folders and all of the files inside of my folder. To give you an idea of what I have done, I have deleted all of the files inside of this folder and I have added my files that I have created previously with Canva. So here I have all of the backgrounds and here I have all of the glasses and so on. The last thing that we have to do is change the configuration file. The configuration file is inside of the source folder 
in the config. Now this file is going to generate randomly all of the JSONs for files associated with all of our images that are going to tell the network how our NFT is going to behave, whose address the money is going to go to and any other peculiarities and traits that our image has. I will show you right now what I'm talking about. So inside of this config file, no worries, you don't have to code anything, we just have to change some text. The first text that we have to change is this. So right here, if we want to upload this to the Ethereum network, and if we want to, this means that if we want to generate the JSONs files ready for the Ethereum network or Polygon, then we're going to use ETH. If we are doing this for the Solana network, then we're going to add the Solana address right here, or Solana, just type in Sol. So we are going to be using this for the Ethereum network. So this is the general metadata that we have inside of our file. This is going to be our collection name and we can call this whatever we want. Then we have a description of our, uh, of our NFT collection. And then we have a base URI that we are going to see later on. This is going to point uh, our NFT to the decentralized place where we have uploaded all of the data. The next thing is this Solana metadata right here. Now, if you are using Ethereum and not Solana, then you can leave this metadata. Otherwise, you can erase this. This, this is just going to tell Solana what percentage of the secondary market share we want. So in this case, we want 10%. And we also have an external URL and we have the address where the money is going to be accredited or the wallet address uh, where it's going to be accredited and 100% is going to be accredited there. I can also copy and paste this and create as many addresses as I want if I have more creators that are owners of this collection. For Ethereum, it doesn't work like that. So we can, uh, we can forget about this if we are on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, this is the part that is going to generate our images. Remember these layers from before? Now, all we have to do is add in our layer names in here. So we can go to our layers and copy our layers instead of those layers there. Well, once this is done, we can try this experiment one more time. Let's see what happens if we save this file, Control and S, and then run node index.js once again, is it going to work? So it worked again, it generated five images. Let's see the masterpieces that we have created. Well, this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. And this is the fifth one. So no, we know now that it's working. Now we can go back to our configure file and we can finish the configuration so that we can fine tune this script to work exactly how we want. So what I usually like to do is I like to change the width and height of this uh, of default images. So I'll just put 1000 by 1000, just like the original image that I have created. Now, if I wanted to create a GIF, I would also set this to true. This would create a GIF. We can also change the transparency of the background. And there is also other uh, configuration parameters that are all explained on the Hashlibs file and it's extremely easy to fine tune any of these should you need something more. But the last thing that we want to do is we want to change this number right here, which is the number of images that we want to generate. Right now we're generating five because we're just testing it. But what we are going to do is we can add 10,000 right here and generate 10,000 images. It will take some time. So in, that, in this example, I will just generate randomly 100 and we can see them generating in real life and see what is happening. So we can see all of the images are being built. Also, if I go to my folder and if I go into the build directory right here and access the images, I should be able to see all of the different images that are currently being created. Now, one thing that you should also keep in mind, as you can see on this picture, we have a small issue. There is something that has been overlaid. So to fix this issue, we would have to go to our Visual Studio Code, and the way that this is put uh, on top of each other, these are the different 
layers of your image. So by overlaying all of the different layers of your image, you can, you can decide what is going to be in the background and what is going to be in the foreground. So now that we have generated as many NFT, amazing NFTs as we want, I want to show you one more thing. We also have this JSON metadata. This contains all of the information regarding our image and that is going to be required for the NFT that we are going to create later. Now there is different ways that we can go to step four, which means there's different ways now that we can upload our NFTs to the blockchain. We can go to OpenSea and list it manually or using automation. Link down below if you want to see how we can list 10,000 NFTs onto OpenSea with automation or to any other marketplace. Or we can create a custom minting website that is going to take these JSON files and the images. And every time a user clicks on the mint button, it is going to create or assign or take the funds from another wallet and put them into the decided wallet and assign that uh, NFT to that wallet address that has minted the address. I hope that you have enjoyed this process and this video. If you have any questions, join the Discord server. I would love to see your artwork and your art collections. And I would love to get your feedback regarding what I am doing. So ladies and gentlemen, NFT champions, I will see you in the next one.